Welcome back and joining us for a look at the day's market action is uh, Sean Dendera from uh, Tribe Investments. Thank you so much for your time, Sean. Two days until uh, D-Day, um, or at least the start of uh, D-Day, because obviously uh, the results are for the elections will only come after Wednesday. And I'm wondering how the markets are feeling at this stage. We are seeing uh, the JC trading in the red, but I'm not sure if that's maybe thin trading since the FTSE and the US markets are closed today. Uh, firstly, thanks for having me. I uh, do think that today has been quite a quiet day. As you mentioned, you know, two global major economies in the world mm. are closed. So I think the JSC closing in the red is not indicative of, you know, the elections coming up. Mm -hmm. But I am of the view that based on, you know, different po polling surveys that we've seen, the market has actually almost priced in what's going to happen um, with regards to the elections. Mm. So it will be very interesting to see if we'll, if we'll carry on where we at after election day. Uh, because obviously after election, there's going to be a lot more volatility. But for the most part, I think it's already priced in. Okay, and it's going to be quite interesting to see how the RAND reacts before and after as well. Uh, well, let's go into company news because uh, lots of them came out on the JSC. We're still uh, in earnings season. Pick and pay coming out with its uh, year-end results, managing to eke out out a turnover growth there but uh, that was really the end of the good news as we saw the company swinging from a profit to a loss of course something that was well guided I actually saw something very interesting in the share price because after the results it was trading firmly in the red and then it turned around and I think ended off the day about seven percent up uh, is this kind of maybe a signal of just also how kind of divided uh, the market still is on pick and pay so, in my opinion, I think it's due to, I think there's going to be a massive change in management, as you can see that the Ackermans are taking their hands off um, the company. Mm. And if we're looking at pick and pay, uh, the past, let's call it year and a bit, they have been quite, uh, they have been struggling, even from a share price perspective. A big thing is... Um, they haven't been managing to manage their costs, right? So with load shedding, I remember at some point last year, <clears throat> excuse me, at some point last year, they were spending hundreds of millions of rands yeah. on diesel, as opposed to like maybe their competitors like ShopRite, et cetera, where they've managed to actually price in those costs, the interest rates, the load shedding, et cetera. Mm. And I think maybe a change in management or a change in the group structure might yeah. fare well for pick and pay going forward. Yeah, and indeed, I mean, that uh, has been something that uh, markets uh, have been calling for for, I think, the last year, two years. So uh, I guess maybe also, uh, you know, the share price eking out gains was maybe just positivity that at least they finally listened uh, to what investors wanted. Uh, let's go into another company that released a results today, uh, and that is Barla World. Uh, we did see a, a slight a sell off uh, after those interim results. They're not really a surprise, though. Uh, given the softening of growth that we did see in the financial metrics? Yeah, so it's not really surprising. I think it is just a knock-on effect of the past year, looking at, you know, your mining sector, how there was not a lot of demand in commodities, mm -hmm. um, dollar strength, which is affecting commodities trading as well, uh, interest rates, inflation. So there wasn't demand for their products, so hence there is, you know, we're seeing this in their results. However, looking forward, I think there is a bit of a turnaround um, coming uh, in terms of commodities and especially China being a key point there as well, mm. uh, opening up a little bit better. I think their results and their business might start performing slightly better as you know the tide changes going into the rest of the year. Mm. Sean, they keep on coming out with this uh, cautionary announcement and it's all very there isn't any clarity at this point. Could that also be maybe something that uh, could spur on nervousness from the market or not? 100%. I think um, there is a lot of uncertainty. So we're looking right now, there's massive geopolitics. Mm. Uh, so the wars out there. We're looking at, we call it an election year, South Africa um, is going to elections, the United States is going to elections, yeah. the UK is going to elections. So when you know new governments come into play, we do not know what policies they'll, uh, they'll probably put in that will affect the economy. So everyone is cautious mm -hmm. as much as, you know, different indices, et cetera, are performing quite well. There is still that uncertainty in the background where everyone, everyone tends to say, 
cautionary cautionary mm, using that yeah, term yeah indeed uh, well I, I will be speaking uh, to Dominic Suela the CEO of Barter World after six uh, so maybe hoping that he can uh, provide more uh, clarity uh, let's go into Tiger Brands before we get to your stock pick they're also releasing interim results uh, doesn't seem that things went too well we did see revenue they decreasing one percent they were talking about a reduction in uh, you know uh, volume growth uh, even the you know the bottom line there uh, the hips from a total operation from continuous operations only marginally up what how did you choose those numbers so in my opinion I think they've done relatively okay under the circumstances mm -hmm. I think retailers at large have really been suffering uh, because the consumer doesn't have as much disposable income as they generally have um, because of obviously the interest rates I mean I sound like a broken record but <laughs> that is the theme of the yeah. past year you know so interest rates and high inflation and I think what they did strategically was in my view pass on the cost to the consumer by raising their prices mm -hmm. in order for them to cover themselves from an operational um, perspective so as much as the numbers are relatively low yeah under the circumstances, okay. I think it's something positive to see. Ah. I mean, if we look at the sector, look at look, if we look at what's happening with pick and pay, for an example, yeah. we can see that it is quite a tough, tough environment to operate in. Ah, all right. Well, thank you so much for that perspective. Let's get to your stock pick for today. All right. So my stock pick today will be We Buy Cars. And sticking to the theme of high interest rates, I think people do not have a lot of cash to be buying new vehicles. So there is a lot of potential growth in the second hand market. And the fact that, you know, they just recently listed, that is a positive sign in terms of the business is growing. They're looking to expand. So it's a, it's a stock to look out for. Mm -hmm. Quite risky because it just listed uh, recently. But I do think there is some positive ground to see there. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time and for your analysis on what has moved investors' money today. Sean, uh, that was Sean Dendere from Tribe Investments.